My name is James Quitkill, the Fighting Cowboy, and you're watching my manager and the host of the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Forget about it. Hi, this is Ray Bumbo Mancini, and you're listening in to the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Now, Brad's told me he's won many accolades for this interview show. I haven't seen any. And he's told me he's world-renowned for his interview uh, style, his charming personality. I doubt that. And he told me he can get anybody to anybody on his show because everybody wants to do it. I don't. So Brad, at this point, this is where you want me to say your stupid line, right? But I'm not going to say it. I keep telling you, I'm not going to say it. So until then, Listening to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. And Brad, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. I'm John Ruiz, two-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching my man, Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. This is Alfonso Ratliff. You're watching the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. This is David Diaz, 1996 U.S. Olympian former WBC lightweight champion of the world, and you're listening to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. You know him for his catchphrase, forget about it. You know him as the author of the world-renowned book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. You know his snazz, you know his jazz, you know him for all that pizzazz. When it comes to boxing commentary, he does the most. Without further ado, here's your host of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show. Bad Brad Berkwit. How did all these people get in my room? Forget about it. Hey folks, welcome back to the episode of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show, Forget About It. Now today we've got a special guest on who used to be the USBA NABF. WBC, light heavyweight champion of the world. Now, before we get into the Q&A and I introduce him, was at his gym Friday evening for the Chicago Boxers reunion that Vince Hudson put on. Vince poured his heart and soul into it. Great gym, it has that old school feel to it. Like I always talk about gyms back in the day, I used to go to Philly and places like that. It's got that old school feel to it. And we're gonna talk about that some more on the show. But Vince, I wanna give you your props and to all the guys that came out. Uh, a lot of people were very touched about uh, Wilfred Benitez, who was there, Gerald McQuellen, G-Man was there. Their sisters brought him in, and we got to give them props uh, for taking care of them. They got some really nice awards, and Vince recognized them, so that was great to see. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below the videos. We can have a good conversation. We'll just remember, to get respect, you must show respect. All right, with that said, we're going to bring on our guest now, who drove quite a way, as he told me, in a text several times, because he said I gave him the wrong information, but you can blame GPS for that. Montel, oh, man. welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming on. Oh, yeah. oh, and man. now you know how it feels to be in witness protection in the middle of nowhere. Right. Okay? And right. you're in the middle of nowhere out here. Yes. And you didn't ever even heard of St. John before now? No. Okay. No. But you heard of Hammond. And you, yeah. Okay. That was a good marker. It was further than what I said. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Before we get into the questions, I want to read a quote that I got about you. I usually try to get one for everybody that have come on, especially the boxes. And it says, Montel Griffin was one of the slickest and craftiest boxers I ever saw. One of the most intelligent I had the ple pleasure to watch. If you look up Cerebral Boxer in the dictionary, his picture is there. Former WBA lightweight champion of world, Ray Boom Boom Mancini said that about you. Uh, Boom Boom on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, I, I saw Boom Boom as a kid and uh, I was a big fan and uh, I fought in China and I didn't get, I, I couldn't, I never ran into him, I didn't see where he was at. And it was during the fight, I looked up, and he was sitting ringside, and he smiled at me. Okay. I smiled back, I'm like, damn, it's boom, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to take the structure from my trainer, I got sad, I'm like, damn, it's boom, boom. And then he smiled at me, I thought that was, I thought that was, uh, cool. Real nice. We're gonna start from the beginning, we're gonna talk some boxing, some life in it, after the commercial break, then I'm gonna mm -hmm. throw you some fun questions. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer, it's all about you today. First, for the viewers, where did you grow up? Chicago, on the south side, 101st and low. But uh, my father's gym was on 63rd Street, so 
about 20, 25 minutes away from my house. Now, was it always called Windy City? Or what was well, your father's name? It was name? called Johnny Coulons. Okay. Johnny Coulon, who was born in Canada, came from to Chicago. He was a uh, Bantamweight champion, former Bantamweight champion. And he was old, probably like 80, 90. You know what I'm saying? When I, when I saw him, I was three, four years old. I just remember, I, don't, I, I, saw, I saw Johnny um, Coulon, but his wife kind of, I can remember her more. She did the talking, she, you know what I'm saying? Johnny, I don't remember him talking too much. Right. But, you know, I knew about him picking up, trying, people trying to pick him up and he pushed them trying, you know, their nerves and, you know, it was Johnny Coulon, so I knew who he was, but I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? But now as an older, an older guy, just thinking back to it, I remember seeing an old man just quiet, just smiling, and his wife did all, you know what I'm saying? His wife, I'm talking right yeah, she did all the talking. Okay. So, you know, it, it meant a lot to me, but uh, my, my brother's 10 years older than me. Okay. My father took my brother to Johnny Coulon to learn self-defense. And I guess after a couple of years, he fell in love with his Johnny was getting old, he ended up buying the gym. Okay. And in 73, he, he renamed it, wanted to see the boxing club. Okay. Yeah. Now, for you Patriots fans, I just realized I was helping Montel Brings Bill to, he wearing his Belichick, Belichick Brady, uh, we're not going to talk about deflating balls and all that stuff. We're going to keep it clean. But you just got uh, Antonio Brown, right? Right, right, right. 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 AB, how do you think you got to do with him? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing is given. We have Randy Moss, who pound for pound could be the greatest wide receiver ever. Went, went to the Super Bowl where we lost, so we got to see what's up, what happened. But, okay, I tried. I, I explained to the guy the other day. He said, yeah, hey, you had Randy Graham, you ain't win. I said, of course, yeah, but it was 2000. It was the last championship of 2004. We was just trying to win the championship, but New England is the defending champ, so right. we'll see how different it is. Okay. And, the, and we got Josh Gordon back, too, so hopefully he, oh, okay. he can keep his it. life on, on track. Okay. Yeah. You had an extensive amateur career. No. No? No. Okay. We'll talk about your amateur career, even if it wasn't extensive. I had 33 amateur fights. Okay. I, I learned how to box as a kid. I had my last fight when I was 12 years old. I took out eight years, I came back. My whole goal was to make the Olympic team. Um, I was sitting in my basement, fat and depressed and nasty, oh boy. My buddy, one of my best friends got killed December 89. December 1990, I get a call from my nephew. He said, uncle, what you doing? I said, nothing. He said, why don't you come to LA and start boxing? I said, all right. He said, no, I'm just, I'm not serious. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I wasn't doing nothing with my life. I was really at a bad place in my life. I was fat, I was up to 210 pounds. And um, I had a car that just broke down. I, had, I was working for UPS um, and I was BSing around so much. They said, if you, if you miss another day, we're gonna fire you. That's okay, I ain't paying no attention. But my car broke down, couldn't get to work, they fired me. And um, I, got, I had to pay the tour in front of my house. I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with my life? And um, my buddy, one of my best friends, Ron Lee, uh, his father was, was a mechanic. He lived right behind me. I said, bro, I said, what, what would you give me for this car? I said, I'm trying to do something with my life. So we give you $500. I said, all right, that's cool. I bought a plane ticket. It was $300. And I put $200 in my pocket. And I moved out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, getting to the back to the question. I had 33 amateur fights. I had, I had, I had, I had, I made the living team with 30 amateur fights. Okay. I had three fights in the Olympics. Now, I know your dad passed away, I think it was 83 he passed 83, away? 83, yeah. Okay. 83. So, when your dad was alive, you weren't boxing at all? You, you boxed after? I was, I, no, I was boxing with my father, but at the time, they didn't count fights until you was 10 years old. Okay. So, from 10 to 12, I didn't have that many fights, you know what I'm saying? So, that's two years. So, from 10 to 12, I had a few fights and, and I quit boxing. Okay. And, um, you know, my mother just said, you know, you can't box no more. And, um, I said, shit, okay. And I just sat around and for eight years and just, you know, grew up as a regular teenager, you know, getting okay. in trouble, messing around, getting drunk, you know, doing stupid stuff. Let's talk about your dad. Yeah. What I'd like you to do, when I came here and started interviewing guys out of Chicago, your dad's name always came up. Somebody in my fans of Ratliff talked about him. Yeah. Everybody loves your dad. I know he was, he's a big, big part of Chicago boxing and always will be. And as I said in your gym, you had that beautiful paint or mirror, yeah. whatever you call it, if you did, I loved it when I saw it. If you would, 
uh, share some thoughts. I, I like you look at the camera, share with the viewers. Talk about your dad, whatever you say is... is uh, I mean, I'm 49 years old, he died when I was 12. This is at the point where I really don't even really remember a lot of stuff. I can remember him being there. It's like now, just like Johnny, Kool Johnny Kulon, I can't remember my father talking. I remember him standing there, but I, you know, so I think it's like, because I'm getting old or whatever, but um, he was a great man. Um, I saw his relationship with him and Muhammad Ali, how Muhammad Ali acted with him. I could tell Ali really liked him, you know? But my father was a guy, and I, I guess I can say I'm kind of like that. He's the nicest guy in the world, unless you do, do something wrong to him, stab him in the back. Then his other side would come out. Uh, he didn't really get along with the, you know, the Chicago boxing scene guys who, who wasn't clean. If they weren't clean or didn't do right, he, he didn't, he, he, was, was, he let them know. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, he, yeah. He, they knew that he didn't care for them. Okay. But uh, he, he was a great man. Uh, well, as we're only two years apart, I'm only yeah. two years old. Yeah. It's got to be, when people bring up my dad, in fact, Eddie Davis came over and sat behind me, and I only knew him from Facebook. He yes. tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Bad Brad. I said, yeah, he said, man, I watch your show. He said, man, I had put up a video about my dad talking about racism back in the day because he, he marched with King in 63 and he, he hated it. And he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, man, I still remember when you put that video up. Yeah. And I never met Eddie outside that, so it touched me. So I, I would think, too, that knowing that a lot of people to this day still remember your dad, it's got to be moving for you as a son, that people still have a, a, a big respect for him. Well... You know, when they when they started in the uh, Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame, I was happy about that. I, I was uh, I was blessed going the first year. Then the next year, I saw the candidates and I saw my father's name, and I told you guys, man, you better buy, you better vote for my father. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's gonna be a problem. You know what I'm saying? So right. he made it his first trip. You accepted I, it for him. You yeah, yeah, him. yeah. I, I accepted it for him. I think I made it 2015. He made it 2016. Okay. And uh, I think it was more people at my father's. The man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just family members came and supported me because they knew how, 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 how much it meant to me. Okay. For him to get, you know, put me to the Illinois Boxing Hall of Fame, I thought that was great. Okay. Yeah. What was the biggest thing for you personally going, if there was, going from being an amateur to the professional ranks? No, nothing. It nothing. was much easier, much better. Much not easier. the headgear, nothing? Uh, at all? Yeah, just not having the headgear. I had to pace, taste my, take one. I wasn't a guy who just fought like an amateur. I never fought like an amateur, I fought like a pro. So the pros is easy. It was better for you probably. Yeah, it was better for me. Okay. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it looked like you turned pro about 93. 93, yeah. Okay. With that decade in boxing, that's obviously 26 years ago, in your opinion, if you were to take, you turn a pro, the fighters that were top, on the top then, compared to the fighters today, what do you think? And I you mean, mean, you, you, you turn pro as a light heavyweight? The, like, I fought light heavyweight my whole career. Okay. Yeah. Well, my first two fights was heavyweight. Okay. I was fat. Okay. But then yeah. I followed him right. for 18 years. But yeah, like him. So yeah. how, how would you compare? The, I mean, the I just made I just made a comment the other day. I said, I said the box this boxing era is the best era since the nineties. Okay. I think to me, I think the night and because I I'm not saying it because I fought in it, but just to say, 1990, you got Lennox Lewis, Holyfield, and Red Ball. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. De La Hoya. Shane Mosley, you know, I mean, it's, great. Just, it's, a great, it's the greatest era in history. I mean, it was a, a thousand, a million, even, even the guys who was 80, then become stars in the 90s. Uh, uh, Pernet Woodford, you know, guys like yeah. that, they became superstars in the 90s. Right. Mike Tyson, he was big, he was, he needed the 80s, because the 90s was bad. For yeah, him. bad. It was bad for him. Right. When uh, he fought Bust in 90. Right. Like, you know, even though he was a champ a couple of times, he, he never, he, he was past his prime. Okay. But, uh, even George Foreman came back in the 90s, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, lady, the 90s yeah, was, yeah, was the greatest yeah. era. Michael Moore, I mean, I could just keep going on and on in different weight classes. Uh, it was the greatest era in boxing. Okay. Yeah, great. Humberto Gonzalez, I mean, just... Yeah, great fight. Another great fight. Yeah, just it, uh, Michael Carl. I mean, I could name a million right. superstars. Yeah, it was a great fight. And it was the greatest era in, in, in boxing history. And I'm saying this guy, this era now, is comparable to the 90s. It's uh, boxing is it, on its way up. It's, um, it's in good hands. Um, the best thing that happened was Fury beating Klitschko. It opened up the heavyweight division, yeah. and you know they always say boxing goes the heavyweight Where division. Heavyweight goes. division goes, that's and right. even though Floyd did this thing, there was so many haters against Floyd. Right. I mean, Floyd was, you know, they always say when when people buy your ticket to see you lose and win, that's when you become right. a star. 
Yeah. So that's when Floyd, Floyd was the biggest fighter in the 90s. And, um, well, I'm sorry, now he's been 2000, 2000, 2000, yeah. 2000 right. but uh, since Floyd, this is the best era. Okay. Yeah. You got two big wins over James Tony. You were like his yeah. kryptonite. What did you see in Tony that, obviously your skills, but you beat him, where a lot of people didn't beat him. You beat him twice. What was it that you saw? Or was it just your style or whatever? I don't, that just I don't, I don't know if James is going to watch this. <laughs> yeah, who he is. But, uh, he follows me. The worst thing that ever happened was James sparring me as, as an amateur. Okay. I, I, went, I Actually, James was going to be my promoter. Really? My manager. My, my, I'm sorry, my manager. Jackie Collins, Jackie Collins called me. He said, we want to sign you. It's okay. So we're going to fly you out to Michigan. James going to pick you up. James picked me up. James. James Tony, I mean, Muhammad Ali don't count. He like uh, a, a, a uncle to me. Okay. But my favorite fighters in history James was Michael Spinks, who was retired, James Tony in front of Whitaker. Okay. And then Floyd after him. So uh, I get a phone call that said, uh, James gonna come pick you up. I'm gonna get out of here. No, actually, I'm sorry. When I got when I got back from Barcelona, all my stuff was at Flint, uh, Chris Berger house. So I went to Flint, Flint Michigan, and yeah. we went to the, to the, what's the name of the stadium in Detroit? Uh, we went to the Detroit. palace. Oh, okay. We went to the palace, and I'm sitting there with Chris Bird, and I see James Tony walking up. I'm like, that's James Tony. And he walked up to me and said, so my dear. It blew my mind. Okay. He walked up to me and spoke to me. I said, oh my God. And Chris Bird, when he walked up, he was like, your man, that's your <laughs> man. True story. So I get the phone call a couple weeks later. I go to Flint, I mean, I go, to, I fly in Detroit, and there's a Mercedes Benz sitting outside of James Hall to pick me up. Hmm. Went back, stayed at his house for about a week or two, hung out with him every day. And the thing, the one thing that I was waiting for is I heard so many stories about people that James Tony is an asshole. Mm -hmm. He gonna curse you out. He gonna treat you like and shit. So and completely and different he side. never, yeah. he, even when we sparred, we was in the gym. He so is some, of that, is some of it kind of when the camera goes on, his, his... No, no. no. He, he just did everybody, everybody else but me. But you, okay. So, so it is I'm true, like, but you. I said, it's <laughs> some, it's some, he's seeing me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And Bill Miller said, uh, uh, we, we spawned in James tomorrow. I'm like, okay. I mean, in the back of my mind, I was a little worried, a little nervous, but he didn't know. And um, I got a ring and sparred him. And um, as we were sparring, James stopped and said, "It's like I'm, it's like you a mirror. It's like you, it's like I'm sparring a mirror myself." And uh, I just felt good about it. Uh, I, um, after the, after the, um, after we sparred, this guy, kid named Kevin. Um, I remember his last name sooner or later. He was my roommate. Okay. And um. He was like, man, he was like, well, you, you did pretty good with James. Like, I ain't never seen that before. I'm like, yeah, he couldn't touch me. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I just made a comment. So we go to a party later on that night, and um, Kevin, Kevin Childress. Okay. I'll never forget his name, because he's a snitch. He's a snitch. Okay. So we go to the party, and like I said, I keep hearing, I'm seeing how James treat everybody else. Right. Talk to him, call him bitches, and you know what I'm saying? I'm like, he, but he never did it to me. And uh, Kevin said, hey, my, uh, James, uh, Montel said you couldn't touch him. And, and everybody stopped waiting for, the, you know what I'm saying, the, the cursing out of the, and he said, he right, I couldn't. That's what, right there, that day. That was, uh, you fought him with first in 95? 95, this so is 92. This, this, I was gonna say, I was like, I a couple years. Yeah, oh, you're an I was, I, I was gonna, he's wow. gonna be my manager. Okay, oh, right, right, yeah. before you took I got you, he I got said, you. He said, shit, I couldn't, I couldn't touch him. Okay. And that day, I said, this man respect me. That day, on why not be him? Twice. Twice. But, uh, you know, we, we couldn't agree on the numbers. And the one thing I noticed, it was, it was half and half, it was, it was half the money that I, they, they didn't offer me what I wanted. Another half was James is a champ, and he ran the gym. He, you know, what I'm saying his personality. And I'm like, I'm like, he's still. I'm like, they gonna put him in the back burner. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, she, she worried. She's still worried about James right now. So about Jackie. Jackie, right. like, how yeah. she really gonna push me? Okay. So I, Jackie was your manager at one point. No, Han James was gonna be my co-man. Oh, we're gonna, Okay, okay. And like I said, we we didn't agree on everything. I went back home. And that was it. Uh, the next time I saw James, who would you wind up getting for a manager? Um, who would you? Oh, I ended up uh, 
signing with a guy, a Polish guy here in um in Chicago. Okay. John Caddyworth. Okay. And um, I told him, I said, look, bro, I need this, this, this. He said, okay. I said, but I'm not gonna be a Chicago fighter. I'm not gonna go 35 in Chicago, go somewhere else, fight somebody and lose. Like I've seen for the last 30 years. Okay. 27 and 0 in Chicago, then you go fight somebody and lose. Okay. I said, I'm not gonna be a Chicago fighter, so I promise. I said, okay. I, I think I fought six, seven fights um, with uh, Eddie Davis and uh, Diddy Arnold. Eddie was my trainer. I know that name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then that's when I signed Eddie Flush. Okay. March 21st, 97, you faced Roy Jones. Yeah. Blatant foul, I'm gonna fight like it was yesterday. Yeah. Blatant foul, he got DQ. Right. And rightfully so. You got the you won a WBC light heavyweight championship. You come back and defend against them, and it went one round. I want to get your observations on both of those fights. Looking back. Okay, uh, March '97, I fight Roy Jones, and uh, everything going my way. Uh, he got he was winning when the fight was over. He was winning by two points on one score card. One point in one score card, and I was winning by one point. But he got, they, they credited him with a knockdown that he shouldn't have got. Okay. He led with me, and I fell. He knew he didn't hit me because knowing Roy Jones, when after the eight count is over, they say box. If I'm hurt, he gonna jump on me. Right. He not, he knew I wasn't hurt. So that was a, that was a uh, knockdown that he, he shouldn't have got credit with. I would have been winning all three score cards. Right. I all three. Right. I would have been winning all three score cards. Oh, the one on one would have been a draw. I was doing right. another two. Right. So, on the fight, everything going good. And during the fight, he the fastest man I've been on. In, 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 uh, the fastest man I've been in the ring with ever in my life. I've been with Bannerways. I've been everybody. This kid is the fastest guy. And, when, and angle. His angles were just. Really... He just God given, man. Right. I mean, I spar Floyd Mayweather. Some people say he's the greatest fighter ever. No comparison to fire speed. Wow. No comparison. Okay. So, I'm dealing with the speed. I'm trying to. Keep my eyes open, and I think I did pretty good. Back to speed for speed with Roy. I think my speed level went up a notch. Um, the counter shots I hit him with, he he wasn't hard to hit. I mean, he just was just longer than me. As long as he was coming throwing, coming to me throwing punches, it was easy. But if he stayed on outside, five, 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 ten, five, five, ten, five, five, eleven. Okay. James about five ten. Okay. But uh, when he came towards me to throw punches, it was easy for me to hit him. It, it wasn't hard to hit Roy. I'm just, I'm not saying it's disrespectful. I'm just saying right, no, it kind of surprised right. me. Okay. So, everything was going my way. In the ninth round, I saw a right hand coming. And instead of putting my hand, instead of putting my hand up to block it, I tried to turn with it. I saw it coming, I tried to turn with it, and I ended up getting hit in the back of the head. And I got a little dizzy. I'm like, but I'm unhurt. I tell myself, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, okay, move around. I'm talking about something, move around, move around. I said, look, Montel, you winning this fight. Just take a knee, and we gotta win the last two rounds. So I take a knee, I sit down comfortably, take a oh, knee. I look, I mean, I took a step back. I didn't take a knee right in front of him. Right. I took a step back, looked up, looked at the referee. So I'm ready because I'm cool. I remember. So boom, he hit me. It he hit me twice. Hard. He, twice two, three he times? hit me the first time, but the second time he loaded up. Right. And I thank God to this day, I never lost consciousness. I never got killed or anything. I never died. But it boom, it hit me, and it's just like I couldn't hit nothing. Uh, the sound went away. I could just hear the referee count like, but it's like, whoa, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like I really, it was like I was just out of it, and my legs couldn't move. I'm like, what the hell is wrong? I'm like, cause I felt like I knew everything was going on, and I, I had never been hurt like that. So I figured like, okay, I must not really be hurt. But then I tried to get up and I couldn't move. I'm like, oh, I'm what the hell? And it was like I was paralyzed. Right, right. So I'm like, damn. So by the time I get up. They count me out. I said, they, I'm, how can they count me out? DQ. I said, he hit me. What the hell is going on? And uh, there was so much confusion going on. And my brother said, I just heard, uh, what was the commission name at the time? The black guy. My Larry Hassan. Larry Hassan, my man, man. I'm sorry, Larry. You're my man. Uh, they said, Larry going to disqualify. You, you getting disqualified. But when I heard that, it was a, it was a, a relief. That I ain't lose by knockout on a dirty punch. Right. But at, to that day, to this day, I ain't never been happy on a, over a win, over a disqualification, because I was in the ring with him and I was beating him. But like, I know I could beat him fair and square. So uh, I remember riding the limo back with my wife. I said, man, I didn't leave. I didn't want this. I don't want this to happen. Like to this day, I told Roy, I said, Roy, 
people hate me because you hit me. Yeah. That's the only makes sense. Yeah. You, you hit me, right? And people hate me. Right. I'm like, that's crazy. He's just laughing, man. I'm sorry, bro. I said, people hate me, and you hit me. I, I don't understand. Right. That, that you that much, they much that much of a fan of yours that they mad at me because you hit me. Yeah. It don't make sense. So I mean, it's cool and um. So you get was it in the contract a media rematch or did you give it to him? Because you no, nah, I mean, I mean, first of all, I'm a fighter. Oh, I got balls. I'm a, I'm a man. And I, I heard him say on the interview, I know he ain't gonna fight me again. And I walked up to him and said, bro, we can do it again. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't have no problem fighting. And then, you know, of course, he went on TV like, yeah, I don't believe, I believe when I see it. So, you I, fought um, You fought him. Yeah, but you know, I, got, I got a dummy. Because uh, Eddie Fudge, I put the fight together with Steve Collins in Ireland for two men. I got two men when I fought Roy. But Eddie Fudge like, look, I got this fight. Fight him first. And then go just make his other two. Then we can fight Roy. And my promoter, Panos Iviades, who was dirty, just kept forcing the rematch, kept forcing the rematch. So, um, to, to not to get off the subject, but I got a, I was in a conversation with, uh, I'm not gonna say nobody's names. I was talking with a guy who worked with Roy Jones. And I said, what? I said, Chris Bird, Chris Bird called me after the fight. It said- The, the, the rematch? After the second fight. Okay. Chris Bird said, man, hold on, I can't say his name. He just said, uh, this guy said, it's a shame what they did to you. But they rushed you in the ring. So, so you you weren't fully prepared? 20 or? years later, I saw the guy at the, okay. at the, at the WC convention. I said, what, what did you tell Chris Bird? He said, we got you, bro. We, 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 we forced you to go in the, in the ring. We knew you weren't ready. So and they did the Duran. And, 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 and he said, your promoter and your manager knew about it. Wow. That's what broke my heart. Yeah, I would. I, but, you I, know, yeah. I, had, but I had seen, over time, I had seen things that Panos had did. That, you know, I'm not surprised about it. You know, so he beat me out. That sounds like Sugar Ray and Duran. They rushed Duran back in the ring. They knew. Well, they knew. Well, they rushed him back. They rushed him back in the ring because they knew he was overweight. Right. But I didn't know. But it was still an advantage. But, I, right, right. But, you know, Duran you know, took the money. Yeah, he did. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I, didn't, even, I didn't even get the money that I, that I asked for. I, I settled for that. But, um, you know, it, it's one of them things. I ain't making no excuses. I don't even care no more. But. I don't want to was was I know it was, I know it was, I know it was quick, but was he any different in the first fight or second fight or no? He just, he oh, just caught you. I was totally different. His power? He was totally different. Okay. I, you pissed I, him off? I, I, but you, but you want to know something, and I remember this because back in the, and, and you, you know you're boxing. I watch you post on Facebook. When, and I don't know if this story is true or not, but I always heard that when G-Man got hurt, Roy changed. It, he went more, he was more defensive and his fights were, because you know, early on he was knocking guys out. And he kind of, I don't know how true well, that is. Well, when he went up to like heavyweight, he was fighting bigger men, so he, he, probably, he was fighting bigger men. a little bit different. But I was amazed that he came out, like, just as soon as the bell rang. Let me, well, I'm just going to say this to you. If you watch the fight right now, you listen to the commentary, uh, Jim Lampley say, Roy Jones has never started this fast in his career. Right, I know. Because he knew I was, he knew I wasn't warm. Right. He knew I was, you know, I wasn't warm. Though. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's something. Yeah, I, I just water under the bridge. Something I gotta live with for the rest of my life. It okay. Is, it's over. If the box, if you had to pick one fight, um, amateur or pro, a lot, a lot of times the guys are picking amateur fights. But if you had to say, this is the fight that you saw Montel Ice Griffin the best at, what would you? Pick? I got two fights. Uh, okay. What are they? My fourth fight with Jeremy Williams to make the Olympic team. I beat him 33 to 8. He was uh, undefeated in America. He never lost to an American. Uh, Jeremy went the, when it was a heavyweight? Yeah. Okay. That's why. Out of New York? That's why I beat him. Nah, he was from um, Iowa. But he was living in. Um, oh, it's not who I'm thinking of then. Jeremy Williams. I know he's from man, Jeremy. Half, yeah, half man, half man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's from New York. From, he from, um, he from Iowa. Is it? But he lived in. Um, in New York? No, nah, in LA. Huh? Um, I don't know why I thought he was from New York. In, uh, I saw him. What's, what's the suburb right outside of LA? Uh, I don't know. Well, where Snoop is from. Uh, oh, Compton. No, no, not Compton. Nah, uh, 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 Sacramento. Right? That's no, nah, it's, uh, it's a uh, forty-five minutes from LA. But it, it's Crenshaw. No, nah, it's a big, it's a big city that get a lot of love. Okay. Uh, Long Beach. Oh, Long, Long, Long Beach. Beach in the house. I so, should have known that. Yeah, so Jeremy was living in Long Beach. Okay. He he got this decision the first two times we fought, but I beat everybody. Know I beat him. I fought him four times. I beat him all four times. He know it, but. It is what it is, but the fourth fight against Jeremy, well, I showed all, all the haters, I showed everybody who I was. I fought on a Sunday, main event, 
on the amateur show, on everybody was there just to see one fight. Yours. Because the whole Olympic team had been picked already. Just me and him. But like I said, I fought a main event fight on TV as an amateur. Okay. I won that 33 day. I remember the score. And then the James, second James Tony fight. Okay, so said, okay. I fought James for 14 fights the first time. Everybody said I got robbed, you know, because they was going with their heart. Um, and said it was a fluke or whatever. We fought, we fought a year later, but it was like two years. Because I fought in January of 95 and December 96, so it was basically yeah, like two years. years yeah. We had both had 10 fights. Okay. I had, I didn't give a TV fights. He did, but I did. And um, I got a phone call. My manager said, uh, actually, I got offered to fight Mike McCallum. Michael? Mike McCallum. Mike McCallum, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bice Nash. For the yeah. WC intern belt. Okay. For $80,000. And then I get a phone call from HBO that said, look, we want you to fight James again. He gets 750, you get 250. I said, I beat James. Yeah, no kidding. I said, well, why would I take less money? Okay, we'll call him right back. 10 minutes later, okay, 500 piece. I should have said, no, nah, I should be 750. Well, yeah. I wouldn't even yeah. think it, but anyway, right. so so then, okay, I get 500,000 offer to fight James. I get 80,000 on offer to fight Mike McCallum, and I go over uh, Jose Suleiman's house. In Mexico City. And um, he said, well, you need to fight Mike McCallum. I said, I, said, I got offer 500,000 for James. Don't worry about that. Just be Mike and you'll make more money. I said, come on, who? No. Who going to turn it down? No. I, you think I'm not going to fight a guy who I beat already before? Right. For, and half a million yeah, dollars. So, right. so, uh, yeah, I took that fight and, and that ended up being my second. That, that ended up being my two. most, my, 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 um, best profile. my best profile. Okay. My favorite profile. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I should ask this question looking at your Any Facebook post. Where you put your feet down. I don't know about your feet though. And you said you had 204 pounds. Give me a cruiserweight fight. Yeah, I saw oh, you post yesterday. I, I, I know. Right I came now, out with 219. Right. No, I'm busting yeah. your chops. But yeah. what I'm saying is, this question says that you're retired, but I don't know. You trying to come back? Hell no. Exactly. So since I'm you're just retired, I, I'm just getting my I know that you. I know I you're feel you, good I know. Myself, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I put them up too. 2011 looks like when you last fight. Is that right? I tried to fight 2016. Okay. And I got suspended from my job. Okay. And I thought that was God telling me, man, just leave it alone. Were you at the sheriff's department? I, mean, I was a Cook County Sheriff. Okay. I was suspended for three years. I just got let go of money ago. So I got a huge lawsuit. And that's a whole nother story. Right, right. We're I was training for a comeback 2016. Okay. And I got suspended. And I said, well, you know what? That God telling me, to just sit down. Well, what I was going to ask you is, 2011 was your last fight, at least on paper. 2011. What, what did, what, for the new viewers, for the younger viewers, that know of you, what have you been up to outside of the boxing? Uh, well, actually, I was actually starting, I was training fighters then. You know what? No, not really. I was in the gym training corporate people. I was just training corporate America, just, you know, made a living training. I didn't get back into boxing in 2016. Okay. Sean Simpson asked me to train. I kind of was just sick of boxing. I was tired of all of getting stabbed in the back. I got tired of getting robbed. I got tired of all the BS. So, excuse, so, 2016, I was just in the gym training fighters. Okay. I mean, 2011, I was just training fighters and, um... Well, when did you open Windy City? 2017. Okay, 2017. Okay. Right. Okay. As I got, as I got suspended, I said, I'm just sitting around doing that. I said, I got to do so with my money. So, I was going Okay. And I think it's going to be a blessing in disguise. And I got to give you a props. My favorite videos are yours. When you try to, when, when not going back and you know, trying to be funny. So I love the stuff that you do with the kids. Oh, yeah. So if you would look at the camera, tell them about your gym, where it's located, where it's located and some of the classes you offer, especially the kids. Clarence Griffin, Windy City Boxing Club, 2150 South Canal Port. We in the basement, the Lacuna Lofts. We have um, youth classes three days a week, five days, I'm sorry, five days a week, three days during the week, Saturday and Sunday. We have a non-profit organization, Winter City Boxing Youth Foundation, and also have at school matters there. So I'm doing a lot with the kids right okay, now. Okay, I love it. If you had the power to change one thing in professional boxing, what would you change one time? Uh, the government take over and get one commissioner, everybody be fair, make sure the judges are fair, uh, and just run it like, uh, uh, like all other professional sports. Okay. Pensions, everything. And, and, I, and I agree with you. I think you, you might add, uh, I might add, uh, and not somebody just appointed because they're 
brothers of your uh, comics. Oh, somebody, somebody that knows yeah, somebody the sport of boxing. I mean, like David Stern. David Stern, one of the best commissioners ever. He passing on to the new guy. He doing a great job. I just want somebody uh, who gonna learn it the right way. I mean, okay, if you if you're a promoter and that's your fighter, nine times out of ten you gonna win if, if the fight is close. And that's we know this now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can name, um, I can just do a list of fights that we know who really won, but because of the problem. Right. right. So we just let's do it the right way. Okay. I mean, I just feel like this. I didn't cry too many times because of boxing. And I, I don't want nobody else crying. Okay. Yeah. My daughter went to box. I told her no. Cause you're not boxing. You're crazy. No. I mean, I cried enough for both of us. You're not boxing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? She said, I said, what's your second favorite sport? She said, basketball. I signed up. My daughter playing pro ball in Germany right now. So Good for her. 10 years right. later. What's in? What's in? Uh, she probably, I forgot. And that. you forgot. So you know what? Don't let your daughter watch this. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell, dad, uh, tell dad when you see him again. Germany. Two. Germany. Two. Germany team. Two. If you had, with all your experience, all your years, all your success in boxing, if you could offer one piece of advice to a male or female getting ready to turn pro, what would you tell them one time? I just told a kid the other day, man, life is, man, life is short. Don't waste your time. You can never get it back. I said, I'm, I'm 49 years old. I felt like I was a kid. I, th I felt like I was 22 when I made the team, like five years ago. And I, it's old now, and ain't nothing that can replace that. Even training is okay, but ain't nothing like getting in the ring. So I tell everybody, man, don't waste your time, man. Just do it. You're going to do it, do man, it. Do it. Right. Don't waste time. You can't get it back. You okay. know what I'm saying? And give it 100%. Who gave you the nickname Ice? This is long. It's a crazy story. And he first get credit for it, but my buddy Brian Cooper from the neighborhood. Okay. Like, to this day, I swear to God, to this day, I got home from Barcelona. And he called me Ice. He said, what, you, what you gonna do, Ice? What you gonna do, Ice? And I'm like, what? why you call me? You know what I'm thinking? I said, why you keep calling me Ice? I never asked him. And um, when I turned pro, they said, what's your fight name? I said, I don't have no fight name. I said, well, my friend called me Ice. Yes. That's what it was wrote down. Okay. But Eddie Fudge got the credit. Okay. He said, I, he said, I never seen nobody so calm under pressure. He said, the kid like he Ice. Eddie Fudge went a great track. Yeah. Oh my God, great track. Okay. On the, I, how he got the nickname of Ice, we're gonna take a short commercial break. Hey folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it, Bad Brad Berkwood. And I got an exciting opportunity for people that would like to sponsor the Bad Brad Berkwood show or advertise with me. If you're interested, call the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B B E R K. W I T T B Berkwit, my last name of course, at AOL.com. One more time, that phone number is 703-517-2155. Sponsors and advertisers, we're looking for you. Alright? Forget about it. Hey folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwit. And what do Gene Former, Aaron Pryor, James Quick Tillis? Davey Pearl, Joey Bishop, Al Martino, Jerry Bale, and Roy Jones Jr. all have in common. Well, they are some of the many interviews in my boxing book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of this book, go to authorhouse.com. Again, that's authorhouse.com. And if you would like it personally autographed, all you have to do is pay postage and handling to St. John, Indiana, back to your location, and I will sign it the way you would like it, or I can put a personal description that I think you would like in it. All right? Forget about it. Hey, folks, this is Bad Brad Berkwood, and I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis. Now, a short little bio on him. On October 3rd, 1981, he faced Mike Weaver for Mike's WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World and went 15 rounds, dropped a close decision to him. Fast forward to May 3rd, 1986, when James Quick Tillis took on a then young Mike Tyson, who was 19-0 with 19 knockouts. Quick took him the distance, and he was the first man to do that, and he laid the blueprint that Buster Douglas would take four years later and wind up beating Iron Mike Tyson. Now, with that said, if you would like to book James Quick Tillis for personal 
autograph signings, TV, movie events, personal appearances. You can reach out to me at the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Again, that's 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B-B-E-R-K-W-I-T-T, -T, Berkwit at AOL.com. Again, I am the personal manager for James Quick Tillis, also known as the Fighting Cowboy. Forget about it. Now, some of my ice is melting. I gotta put in the bathroom, so we're gonna take a break. Exactly. We're back. Now, you might have heard Santino barking. Everybody knows that Santino is Union. He didn't get a number of treats that he wanted, so Debbie had to take him outside. He gotta stay outside now because there's no barking on the set. What we're gonna do now is nothing to do with boxing. We'll throw some random questions out at you, fun questions, right or wrong answers. There's none. Whatever you pick off the top of your head. You already mentioned this, but I'm going to ask it again. I know you picked three. Favorite fighter of all time? I'm not going to leave it. I mean, Muhammad Ali is like my father, like my uncle. I mean, do I have to really say somebody else? I mean, no. Muhammad Ali. He's the greatest, yeah, okay. he's the greatest man ever walked the earth. Favorite fight of all time? I was just thinking the other day, I said, uh, I said, Foreman and Lyle. Great fight. I said Ali and Frazier won. Great fight. I said Holy Phil and Bo won. Great. I said Ray, Ray Marshall and Lennox Lewis. They, Who do you think won that fight? I thought, I thought, is it while we on camera? I thought yeah, Ray we're won. On camera. I, I, thought I know, Ray I always won. thought Ray won. Lennox was my man. I know, but I still I feel Lennox Ray won. Was, me and Lennox had the same promoter. Okay. I thought Ray pulled out the fight. The I, did I, I did too. I did too. At the garden. I was there. I fought that night. Okay. Yeah. Favorite boxing commentator? Bobby Chaz. Okay. Um, I like Bobby Chaz. Paulie is good. Tom is good. But I, Bobby Chaz, I okay. think he's so really great. So you like the fighters better than the, the non-fighter commentators? I mean, that's how I listen to. I don't listen to people who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, I, I I can't even say who's the best non-fighter. Uh, uh, well, who do you enjoy? Anybody? No? To a fight? Yeah. Don't matter. If you don't have one, you don't have one. Uh, Gil Clancy, though. I like Gil Clancy. They still love him on CBS with I Tim Ryan. The guys yeah. not who can't fight and never fought. Okay. I don't, need, I don't need to ask this question because we already did in the intro who his favorite football team is. So, obviously, we know it's the Patriots. 720. So, let me ask you. You must think a lot of shit in Chicago about them Bears. Now, like, I'm not a Bears fan. How do I take it? How do they I don't make no bunch of shots, but how are you from Chicago? I'll like give, give them a reason why. Okay. Everybody, I give 1985, the Bears won Super Bowl. Um, they say maybe the greatest team ever. Could, could, not the greatest at, team at that time, they was the greatest. I mean, I think some other team might, might have passed them up, but at that time, they was the greatest team ever. And the most underrated player on that team was Wilbur Marshall. Oh, I remember him. Great and they, player. Didn't, they didn't resign. Great player. When they didn't resign him, it broke my heart. I was that was done. it. Was done. I was done the Bears. Nah, okay, that was 85, so 2005. Dez McClock was there. That was my main man, number 88, Dez Clark. And I I was a Dez Clark fan. I got I went to three Bears games a year for free for six years. Okay. And I never rooted against the Bears. I never, I'm not a fan of them. I didn't even root. You know, there's a lot of people. So you didn't wear your Patriots gear in there, the jersey? Uh, you, I did this year because <laughs> Dez Clark retired. Okay. But, no, I went to the game when they played New England. Okay. And I went to the oldest whistle, so you gotta take a picture. <laughs> he said, You expect me to take a picture with this uh, New England Patriots jersey? And I said, Yeah. Okay. He said, Okay. I looked at him and said, right. like, Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Tommy Gunn is the man. He, uh, he's the greatest football player ever. Okay. Favorite basketball team? Uh, I got, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Bulls. Okay. Games. You like baseball? You like baseball? Yeah. Favorite baseball team? Oh, 05 uh, White Sox. Okay, but today, yeah, it might be great, but I mean, today, you still White Sox fan? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's, the Chicago, White Sox is the only Chicago team I root for. Okay. Favorite oh, the Black Sox. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Favorite types of movies that you like? Gangster movies. Yeah, me too. Yeah, okay, favorite. Forget about it, right. Forget, favorite movie? Oh, The Godfather. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, The Godfather. All right, which Godfather you? and, uh, and, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Goodfellas? Yeah, Goodfellas. Okay. Godfather number one, Goodfellas number two. What's your favorite scene in Godfather? When um when the uh, when the uh, politician 
Didn't want to give him. And he, and he says, never think that it applies to my family. Yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> when he, nah, when, when, uh, when, when, he's, he got, when he told Michael he had to pay the fees. Yeah, yeah. Michael said, nah, I'll give you the answer right now. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not doing that. I'm not okay. paying the fees. Yep. And we good. Yep. And then uh, two weeks later, the, the dead prostitute. They set him up in a hotel. Yeah, set yep. him up. Yep. And he told, and he went on the, uh, the board and told him. He says, great, the, great, the, great, they're great. This time is the greatest time I've ever seen in my life. That's right. He just That's changed, right. They, That's changed his whole. That's Debbie. She loved, she loved when, when, they, when they put the head. He said, I only represent one client. Yeah. I never heard of him. And all of a sudden you hear the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, Debbie yeah, loves the, yeah. the horse to sit. When he's pulling yeah, the sheets yeah, back, yeah. And he starts screaming. Ah, exactly. Ah, <laughs> yeah, the greatest one, though. Okay. Alba, Alba. Yep. Favorite actor? I'm going to go with Denzel. Uh, I need De Niro right there, Pacino right there. I'm gonna go with Denzel. Okay, favorite Denzel movie. Everybody said X, but um, Out of Time was awesome too. Yeah, out Training Day. We played against his normal Training characters. Day. Training was great. Day. Tra yeah, Training Day. But you know, I didn't. I didn't like that he had to play a dirty cop. Right. But I'm that's why it. he was so good because he didn't usually yeah. play those type of characters. Right. Yeah. Played yeah. against characters. But, but he played positive roles and never got an award. Then right. he played a dirty guy and then he gonna get an award. But I like I like him. Uh, I shoot. I like when he directed uh, Antoine Fisher. That was his great first movie. movie. What a great, great movie, movie he directed. Great movie. That. Okay, favorite actress. Uh, uh maybe what Julia Roberts. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably like Pretty Girl, Pretty. What was it? Pretty yeah. Woman. I mean, just, she got a, a nice. I like both. I like Sandra Bullock and Julia Roberts. They, I thought Julia Roberts was a great actress, pretty. And then Sandra Bullock came around and she was beautiful. Okay. On um, the movie with uh, Samuel Jackson, and he was innocent, got found guilty, found innocent for killing a little, for shooting a guy. Oh, oh, I'm oh, talking about it. Not a view, not a view. Uh, I don't know what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. I don't yeah, know. I think Matthew McConaughey was in it. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like '97. Yeah, yeah. Viewed or not a beautiful uh, view Beauty from Kiel or You know the name of it? Kiel. No, I know the movie. Is no, that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I just fell in love with it. Okay. Favorite musical band? Don't matter what era, what, who do you like? I, I really like the Spinners. Like, everybody oh, gives spinners. Temptations all the love, but I, I, I'm a more of a Spinner fan. Okay. Felipe Wynn. Great group. Favorite concert you've ever seen to date? I saw Frankie Bellamy and May. No. I saw Jay Z. I mean, okay. It's so I never saw Michael Jackson. Okay. I saw Jan. I mean, I can't pick a one. I mean, okay. The, the first concert I went to, I'm like 14, 15 years old. It was Big Daddy Kane. Oh, right. LL, mm -hmm. Karis One, Public Enemy. It was just, that's yeah. before they all got big. Right. But it, it was all in one show. Yep. And it was at the, Gear, at the Genesis. You remember the movie when we were kids, Crush Groovin'? Of course. With Sheila Crush and all that. Crush Yeah. I just move <laughs> Okay, favorite female singer? I gotta go with Patti LaBelle. Okay, great. I well, think she's the best singer ever in history. You ever see her at any fights? No, I never got a chance. I know she's a Philly her. person. Yeah, I never got a chance. I, it, that would have been, yeah, it's on her. Patti LaBelle. Okay, favorite male singer? Uh, I gotta go with Mike. I gotta go with King Mike? Pop, yeah. Okay, you gotta, I'm not gonna ask you a favorite song by Mike, cause that's tough. You got a favorite album by Mike? I mean, Commercially thriller, but real, real Mike off the wall. That's my that's favorite. Just, yeah, she's that's, out of my life. That's, that's my favorite. That's before he changed. Yes. Before yeah. he flipped. That yeah. was Michael Jackson. Yeah. I love that. The way Mike. he looked, yep. everything before yep. in, in surgery. Yep. Off the wall was crazy. Out. Okay. You have a favorite song? Off the wall. No favorite song. Period. It doesn't matter from who. Uh, or what is? What do you? What's uh, the recent song? fantasy? By okay. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Great song. Oh my God, Phil bad. He killed that song. Absolutely. Male question, favorite type of, I see you got a nice Jeep out there, but favorite car? Do you like muscle car, sports car? I don't even care no more. No. I mean, when I was oh, a when kid, you were young. I, at, at 49, I don't even drive. I just. We know. I Uber. I Uber everywhere <laughs> I go. No, I'm just playing. Uh, no, I ain't. No, I'm just, I, I just Uber. I don't drive nowhere. Okay. I go to the gym. Right. Well, what was the car that you had that broke down back in the day? Just out of curiosity. Oh, that was just, that was a cut of surprise. Oh, because that was a big That yeah. was a hood car. Yeah. You put the rims on the side. Yeah, put the rims on. I remember what, about 85? Uh, it was about 85 colors, 87? Yeah, yeah. Yep. 87, 88. Yep, they were popular. Yeah. Favorite noise 
or sound you like to hear? Probably, you know, the school bell, letting okay. you know school's out, or a plane because I'm going somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I never, that's a good question. I never even thought about something like that. A noise. Flip it. Now, the least favorite noise or sound you can't stand here and it drives you nuts. My wife. Talking. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. You said the least? Yeah. Well, okay, this is the crazy part. Go ahead. Now, look, this is the crazy part. Now, when the gym is packed full, uh, pack full of people, I pay no attention to it. When the gym is empty and nobody there and the bell rings, Oh, that gets on my nerves. That's really? my, I hate that bell if I'm if, if the gym is closed. Okay. And nobody's in it. All right. Ain't that crazy? No. Because I no. love the gym. Yeah. I love the bell, but. But in your gym, I bet it, when it's when it's completely empty because there was a large crowd for, yeah. for the reunion. Yeah. I bet it, it never scared yeah. anybody. That, that, that never takes me more than any sound. Yeah. I heard my life. If the gym is empty. If it's empty. Yeah. Favorite food. It, I mean, it used to be pasta. You know what I'm saying. Italian pasta, but I stopped. I you know because of boxing and getting old, I stopped. I had to cut the part the carbs out. So not seafood like a uh, king crab. You seafood needed? Yeah, that's all. I don't. I don't like this fish. No, seriously, I don't, I don't yeah. like this fish. Okay, that's all. I see seafood to eat. There you go. Yeah. If you hit the lottery tomorrow, Montel, what would you do? I thought about that a thousand times because I still want to train and um, train people, but. I know they'd be asking for money every day. But I, I'm still on standbox. Would you open up gyms though? Would you? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you and I did talk about this and we were being serious the other night on Facebook yeah. about how much boxing gives back to kids. I know that, yeah. that means a yeah. lot to you. Would you, would, you, know, would you do something yeah, with I'm, this, I'm more for the kids? I'm trying to do Okay. I'm tired of Chicago with us. That's interesting because the next question is your yeah. favorite vacation destination. <laughs> I, I mean, somewhere warm, right? I mean, where do you like, like to go? I mean, my, my second home is LA. Okay. I moved to LA for three years. That's that's it. The LA means something to me because that's why I made the living team <clears throat> in Vegas. I lived for Vegas. I lived in Vegas four years, but I tra I trained there from '93 to '08, but I lived there for four years. Okay. So that's somewhere so, warm over there. Okay. If you could meet one person from any yeah. time in history, it doesn't it's have easy. to be boxing. I mean, Who is it? Eddie Murphy. I mean, he he might. Be. Okay. Well, what, I'm would not like, what would you ask him? Oh. Uh, Why did he start doing stand up? I mean, well, you know he's making a comeback. Yeah, Netflix yeah, will make seventy million so, bucks. Right, Netflix paid him seventy million. He just did Dolomite. Right, which I can't and wait to just see. Say, and he just said you're going to tour, start doing comedy because he got to do that for his, for his comedy right. special. But and I, you, I, talk, I hung out with Charlie Murphy. Okay, I he was hilarious. I should that. Charlie Chuck Murphy's my man. I uh, I came home to try to get back with my wife, my first, my ex wife. I get a phone call. You want to go see Charlie Murphy and Ashley Larry, but it was in Burning Hills. I was in Country Club. Okay. I, I got to see Charlie Murphy. So I leave seven eight o'clock. I come home five in the morning. My wife said, "You ain't changed. We can't get together." But I wouldn't. I wouldn't regret it in my life because I hung out with Charlie, Charlie Murphy. Murphy. I, I'm the so first man. Were you shocked that he died? He passed away. I'm not, you know what? Well, I haven't seen him for years. I'm like Charlie don't look right. Really? This guy's real skinny. Yeah. I'm like something ain't right. And then he just got skinny skinny. Yeah. So so I and he told me, he said, Man, my brother love you as a boxer. Mm. He's like, me and my brother. Actually, look, true story. I go to Vernon Hills, go see Charlie Murphy and Ashley Larry. Charlie Murphy got off stage off stage and went out the door. I said, I'm gonna go follow him. I get out, I go out the door, I go around the corner, I turn, look, he was looking at me. So I turned around, I went in the bathroom, I came back, he was looking at me. I'm like, damn. He said, hey, you want to tell Griffin? I said, yeah, man, come here, man. So he said, love. I'm like, man, he said, man, man, me and my brother watch you all the time. Wow. That's cool. I said, man, I'm so, so he said, I said, he said, what you doing at the show? I said, no, we hanging out. He said, okay. So to say, to say the show was over at B Lab. Me, we went to a bar, Charlie Murphy, Murphy uh, ordered a, uh, what's a little cheap tequila? I don't know. Okay, but anyway, he ordered a little cheap tequila. I said, nah, nah, give him Patron. He had, I was the first man Charlie Murphy had Patron with. We hung out all night. And my wife was like, man, you ain't no different. You ain't changed. We ain't get back together. And I wasn't even mad. I, I never regret that day. To hang with Charlie Murphy. It was, it was, I just, I said, bro, I'm not going to sweat you. I said, I got to ask you one Eddie Murphy question. I said, why, how come y'all ain't never did a movie together? 
Because they had little roles in the movie. They said what we did, you know, we did Hollow Knights. Nights, yeah. I said, yeah, but I'm talking about look, yeah, you yeah, and him. Yes. I think y'all could have carried a movie. Yes. He said, well, we're going to do a. Uh, he wrote the movie on um, with the fat lady. Norbert. No, 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 yeah. no but he said, well, yeah. I, I wrote a movie, let's do it come out. And, you know, it didn't do good in a theater like right. people thought, but I thought yeah. it was hilarious. Okay. But I got a chance to. So, Eddie. Anyway. Raw or Delirious, which one did you like better? I know both, but which one did you like better? Raw gave more love, I think Delirious is better. Delirious? Like, Raw broke the record for the most watched stand-up in history. Right. It's still, it's still to this day, but Delirious is Which better. one, now this I don't remember, which one was where he talked about the hamburger when he lived in the Delirious. Delirious. Was it Delirious? Yeah. Which one was the one he talked about? No, no, about? wait, no, he talked about... Was nah, that yeah. Raw? I don't know why I thought I it was Raw. Raw was the one when he said, this, this... My mom was like with uh, the hamburgers, right? With the, my mom and, and it was like a one yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was a big, with, yeah. And then uh, right. um, when he talking about Ralph Crandon, and Norton and Cram, that was the lyrics. That was the lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Right. With everything we've talked about, boxing, life, all of that stuff, if you had to sum yourself up in a couple words as a human being, what would you say one time? I feel like I under I underachieved. Like I should I should been I should been a household and I should been one of the greatest fighters in history. I feel like I'm going to achieve. I, um, uh, I'm not saying that I uh, never trained to win the ring 100%, but uh, just all the dirty things that, uh, that happened to me. And, you know, I also fought four years going through a divorce. Right. And I wasn't 100%. My mind wasn't there. Uh, so I, I, just, I feel like I should have been one of the greatest ever. Okay. Now that's the boxing side. No. As a human being, I want to take you away from boxing. As a human being, as you as a person, your your soul, if you had to say, sum yourself up as a person, nothing to do with boxing, what would you say? I think I'm one of the most loyal guys, uh, honest. Uh, I think I'm one of the best friends I have. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what's on my mind. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. Uh, I'm going to be loyal to you. I'm going to have your back one million. Uh, so that's one thing about it. I know I'm a good guy. Okay. And finally, last question. Do you have a saying? <laughs> that was a good day. Finally, do you have a saying you live your life by? I, uh, I mean, you know, I always, you know, I tell all my fighters at the gym, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, shit, nah, I don't know, but, uh, you know, you work hard. Like, I don't say, uh, what Floyd say, something like that. I just say, uh, no pain, no gain. Okay. No pain, no gain. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, you know what I'm saying? If you don't get nothing out of it, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna feel yeah, it. That's but, fine. That's a good one. I always tell everybody, and I stole this from Ali. I talk to God every day. If God wouldn't kennel, man, be against so That's why I ain't worried about nothing. I've been through my life. Okay. What I'd like to do to close out, I'd like you to look at the camera, look at Deb, and I want you, besides the throwing punches, I want you to send out whatever you want to say at your platform to your family, your friends, and your boxing fans. Come to the gym. Clarence Griffin, when to see you boxing club. You get a great uh, workout. You'll be around great people. You'll feel comfortable about yourself. Uh, I want to say hi to, uh, to my kid, my daughter Bridge is in Germany playing ball. My son Terry just left to go to Lincoln playing ball. I got a son at home. Get up and go running because you're always tired. And uh, my oldest son, Montel the second, he uh, he's autistic. Uh, he's he's high functioning, but you know he he wasn't able to you know live that life that I wanted to live. And I just hope the best for him. Okay. All right, hey, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate that. Man. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, folks, you said get him on. We got him on. He complained, by the way, coming out here. He told me it was further than what Way he said on his, on his GPS. He wasn't on his way. He was, he was happy, though, because it was fresh air out here compared to, compared to Chicago. But, hey, we got him on. Another great guest. It's another show in the can. Forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad. Frank was a man too. Frank was a man too. Sure was. The chairman of the board. He was a man. Much respect. Absolutely.